So I became aware of this uh, new channel on YouTube, a channel called Equals Project, and it is either run by Cathy or it's... Cathy is involved in it, I'm not entirely sure, but it's definitely... Cathy is definitely in there because many of her videos have her voice on it, Cathy Preston, Laura Leila. And um, she threw a challenge my way, or Equals Project threw a challenge my way, asking me to answer a whole bunch of questions, uh, but there's a problem. You see, the questions are to be answered, and I quote from the video, so I'm going to look over here for a second. Imagining yourself to be God, what you think God would say. So the answers need to be given from the perspective of God. Now, uh, that leaves me with a problem. After all, I have no idea what a god is supposed to be. So, I don't know how I could answer those questions. Now, you could, of course, ask me to answer questions as if I were, say, Yahweh or Allah or something like that. However, those entities are logically impossible, so they don't exist. And I, I just cannot argue from the perspective of non-existence. That's nonsensical. So all that leaves with me is a vague, undefined God concept that I am not interested in exploring and that I don't have an idea what it is. So I could just end the video here. I could just say, listen, I cannot speak from the perspective of a God, so don't ask me those questions. But that would be the easy way out, wouldn't it? So, I'm not going to do that. Rather than answering the questions as if I were this mysterious, undefined, ambiguous, fuzzy God thing, I'm going to answer whatever questions I can answer, simply from the perspective that those questions are, at the very least, answerable. Are they or are they not? Let's explore that. So, I'm going to look at the questions and see whether I can, you know, perceive of an answer to those questions. And if so, I'm going to do my best to try and, and tell you what I think. <clears throat> That's the best I can do. So here we go. That's like two, almost three minutes in and I haven't even started yet. Sorry, this is going to be a long one. First question, of course, <clears throat> I have to skip. God, why haven't you made your existence and goodness unambiguously evident? <laughs> okay. Second one. You might think it's easy, but it isn't. The question is, how old is the universe? Well, let's just go back to basics, for example, for starters, right? The universe, by definition of the word universe, is the totality of what is real. In, act, in other words, universe and reality are interchangeable. The universe is reality <clears throat> in the original sense of the word. But of course, cosmologists have started using the universe, the word universe, in many different senses of the word. And therefore, there can be a lot of confusion um, there is the visible universe, for example. There is the universe that we are able to experience. There is still the universe as the totality of reality. Which one do we mean? Now, when it comes to reality, the answer, I think, is quite straightforward and unambiguous, to, because reality is the totality of existence including time and space and whatever other concepts we can come up with, and therefore reality has, by definition, always existed. Now, some of you will balk at that answer and say, well, hang on a second, um, how can something always have existed? That would mean it extends an infinite amount of time into the past. Buzz, no. Always just means it encompasses all the time that is, was, and ever will be, but that doesn't have to be an infinite amount. That can be a finite amount. Now, mathematically, 
you can construct concepts of time and space and so on that quite easily encompass a finite amount of such things within um, an infinite number of, say, occurrences or whatever else. But that is not a topic of this video, so I'm not going to go into details. I have posted videos about this in the past. If you're interested, go and look them up. But uh, suffice to say, reality has by definition always existed. There are no moments in time where there was no reality. If you think about it that way, it starts making sense. Even if reality encompasses a finite amount of time. So to come back to other cosmological definitions of what the universe is, for example, our visible universe, as far as we know, it has existed for approximately 13.7 billion time. Now, maybe our visible universe is all there is, in which case reality has existed for 13.7 billion times, and that is thir that 13.7 billion time constitute always. So reality then has still always existed, even if always just adds up to 13.7 billion years of time. If you don't follow this, don't worry. Why would you create something, question number three, why would you create something fully knowing that creation will undoubtedly suffer? Well, you know, obviously, from my perspective, I cannot answer that question. It is asking, first of all, a why question. A why question is a question seeking a motivation, a motivation of God. You see, we're stuck here. I am stuck here. I cannot go any further than that. Because God is an undefined concept for me. So, there you know. Four, what is the function, purpose of our existence? Again, I keep on getting stuck on the same point. The function, the purpose, that is again a question seeking motivation. Motivation of what? I don't know. Stuck. Cannot go any further. Where is the love of my life and how can I make a mine? That is a question that only you can answer. After all, if you are looking for a love of your life, then it is your responsibility to assign that label to somebody out there and pursue that dream and try and do your best to make it reality, to make it reality to enter into that relationship that you desire but the only person who can make that happen I'm afraid is you with of course the cooperation of whoever whatever person you decide to go and pursue in that manner good luck to you what do I have to endure to reach perfect happiness again um, you know I could give you a blasé answer, perfection is a logical impossibility perhaps, or something like that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Well, I don't know. However, you might want to reach within yourself to see what you actually mean by your requirement. What do you mean by perfect happiness? Or maybe you should start thinking along the lines of what am I willing to accept realistically as a level of happiness that I am going to be content with? Maybe that is the way to look at this. And some people will consider that to be going for second best and will reject that. But that's your lookout. Again, happiness is something that you will have to generate from within yourself. A question like, what do I have to endure to reach perfect happiness, indicates that you are seeking this state of being, this state of mind called happiness, outside yourself. And even though I have no idea what a god is and, and so on and so forth, I can tell you one thing, you will not find it out there. That's for sure. Is there intelligent life in places other than planet Earth? And if so, what do they think, feel about God? <sighs> Define life. That would be my first response to that. But 
assuming that there is a reasonable definition of life, and I would go as far back as Schrödinger's idea of life as being a local lowering of entropy at the expense of dumping the excess entropy into the universe as a whole. In other words, life has the ability to locally keep its own order in check at the expense of dumping the disorder out there. Then I would say there is plenty of life everywhere in the universe and I cannot see any reason why there shouldn't be any intelligent life, but like I said, I am not omniscient. I don't know. I just think that the likelihood is quite high. Life as we know it, as I said in a very recent video, that's a very different matter. I don't think we can find that anywhere other than on Earth. But intelligent life in general terms? Yeah, I think that's ubiquitous. But that's just my hunch. How can I explain to a parent why their baby died? Well, you can guess my answer, considering the fact that there is that why in there. There is no why. Babies sometimes die. That's not very nice. But, strangely enough, the fact that I do not have any idea of what a god is, the fact that I do not think that there is a conscience conscious agent out there observing, regulating, interfering with, monitoring, whatever else, our lives, in a strange way makes this a little bit easier to deal with. And I don't mean that in a blasé sense. I don't mean that in the sense that, you know, oh, that's all right then. No, of course not. When something as tragic as that happens, well, you know, there's no, there's nothing good about it. There's nothing acceptable about that. But at the very least, at the very least, you know that there's nothing out there to blame. At least, this is not a conscious decision of something out there, including a god, whatever that is, to target you specifically. It wasn't personal. It's not much of a consolation, I'll grant you that. But at least you can stop beating yourself up over it. You can stop going like, what did I do wrong? Why do I deserve to um, suffer this? Because you don't. Nobody was targeting you. It just happened. And that's bad enough. But at least you do not have to seek for answers. Because quite possibly there aren't any. Have you read the Bible and if so many stars of, out of five would you give it? <clears throat> well, I've read the Bible and it's a great work of, work of fiction. There's some interesting stuff in there and there's some stuff in there that is just plain bonkers. But that's my personal opinion as a human being. How I could possibly answer that as a so-called God, <laughs> I don't know. Is there an afterlife? I don't think so. I think life, my personal life, is the totality of my existence, and therefore there is nothing before or after. Whether this life extends to beyond what I experience in this body is a different question. And of course, then, you also get you know, if you go deep enough with this question, you're starting to look at, you know, I, my life, me, myself, I, all those terms are constructs of my brain. Even the term my brain means I still haven't, I still haven't managed to get out of that construct where, but there is a brain here running this body that constructs for itself the terms I, me, myself and those are constructs that reflect back on the physical existence of that brain 
and therefore will not go beyond the physical existence of that brain. If you look at it that way, then clearly there is no afterlife. So there's no need to opt out either. Dear God, why do you exist? What is your purpose? I cannot answer that anymore, obviously, again, because I have no idea of what a God is. But also, again, you know, there's no external purpose to my existence. Why would there be an external purpose to any other thing's existence, including a God, whatever that is, if it did exist? I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be an awful lot of I don't know. I don't know in this video. Sorry. Why do you allow less than helpful things to happen to good people? I think I've touched on that when I answered the thing about the baby dying. It's the same sort of argument. So I'll leave it at that. How low will the human population need? To, and this is something that that is not necessarily something that only a god can answer, whatever that is. Um, I'll just answer that as best as I can based on what I think I know and fully accepting that my level of knowledge is woefully inadequate. So, all those provisos in place. How low will the human population need to fall and how fast to reach a level which is sustainable what level of technology will society retain afterwards? I think that question contains a presupposition that is not necessarily true. And that presupposition is that the current level of human population is unsustainable. Is it? Okay, let's put it this way. If our current technology doesn't evolve, make progress, then yes, it would be un unsustainable or unsustainable. But technology has always evolved. This same argument that current population levels were unsustainable was already put forward in the 1800s and was as valid then as the argument is now. But of course, then, since then, people invented things such as artificial fertilizer and so on, where they created plant food, the food that goes into the crops that make our food and that sustain our population, out of thin air. That was something that at the time was inconceivable, and when predictions were made about the imminent population collapse as a result of this terrible level of overpopulation that the planet endured in the 1800s, the persons who, the people who made that prediction could not have known the technological advances that lay ahead and that allowed the population to continue exploding into the billions where numbers of people enjoying a tolerable or even enjoyable standard of living are way beyond the total population of the planet back then. So I don't know whether the popular human population needs to fall. Maybe we just need to get our minds in gear, our brains in gear and come up with solutions to sustain the population that is here right now. In the meantime, of course, we can try and keep our population growth in check because if and when that technological progress will happen is anybody's guess. And we cannot simply sit back and count on it to happen soon because it might not. But that's all I can say about that. What does it indicate, dear God, when I have no questions because life appears to make perfect sense to me? Good for you. That's all I can say about that. Why do you allow horrible things to happen to me when I try so hard? Well, again, motivation. Whose motivation? 
you know, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> well, okay, you know, I have no idea what a god is. You know, I can say it again and again. So, about what such a thing might be thinking, you know, how can I even go there? What I could consider as a possibility, of course, is that the thinking that takes place in reality is the thinking that happens in places such as this goes in inside places like that so maybe we are the thinking so what the fuck are we thinking i don't know sometimes i don't even know what i'm thinking if you could have your portrait painted by any painter in history to whom would you give the commission to my nine-year-old daughter She's a great painter. Is Sufism compatible with Christianity? If so, how? I don't know. Well, they're both religions, so they're comparable to each other. Are they compatible? Well, that depends on the practitioners, I would say, the, the people who practice those religions. If they can find a way to get along with each other, then I think it can happen. Both of them have a doctrine of peace, so that's a good start. But other than that, I would say, you know, do your best, folks. If you're a Christian or a Sufi, you know what to do to make it happen. What are mosquitoes good for? Maybe we should devise an apparatus, a piece of technology, that allows us to tap into the brain of a mosquito and then we can ask the mosquito herself what she's good for. And I'm saying her and she because I trust we're talking about the type of mosquito that sucks blood. And I believe, I might be wrong about this, but I believe that they are always the females. Which of those things I regret were too, truly my fault and when I was the victim of something? And when was I the victim of something someone else should regret? Well, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I do think that everything that happens is the result of interplay between different people. You play a part in what happens to you as much as, or even more than, I don't know, everybody else around you plays a part. But we're talking about my fault, we're talking about responsibility. I think the only way we can answer questions like that, and it's subjective in every instance of it, but is to look at the situation and try and find out as much as we can about each individual situation and then judge on that basis and even then we'll probably get it wrong a lot of the time. Are you separate from us, part of us or something else? If so, what? In other words, are you transcendent or Im imminent? Well, again, I don't know what a god is. But the only types of explanations of what a god is that even make the slightest sense to me are the sort of explanations that ultimately boil down to equating God to reality. That is the only sort of explanation of a God figure that makes sense to me in any way, shape or form. And it's not a reason for me to reject the word God altogether because I see it pointless, as pointless if there is already a perfectly good word like reality. But having said that, if we do equate God to reality, so let's talk about reality. Reality is the totality of existence. And as such, there are a couple of observations that we would make. For example, there is no way you can separate yourself from reality. You are an inextricable part of reality. In other words, again, reality transcends us all. And with transcends, I mean that you are part of, embedded into, inextricable from, Ex reality always includes, it goes beyond you, but it includes you. Inevitably, putting yourself outside reality or putting anything outside reality makes that thing 
or yourself, by definition, not real. Simple as that. So, then, we are, reality is transcendent. There is no way to be separated from reality. There is no way we need to do anything such as worship, bow down to, and so on, reality. We just need to exist. And that, by doing that, by simply existing, we are in a relationship with reality. And that can never change. There is no belief required there. How and why were we not worth talking to in some respectful way? Can't answer that. Dear God, please explain the physical laws of the universe. For example, what is dark matter? Can't answer that. Why? Motivational question. Can't answer that. Do you exist? Can't answer that. What are you talking about? Does what exist? God? What is a God when it's at home? 